some amazing guests today. I think you're going to love the topics that we're going to be talking about. Uh, our first guest that's coming on to the show is Shaif. 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 It's Shaif. We have a Shaif coming on. Or a chef. Just like you're seeing a pattern. Last Tuesday, we had Chef Clemenza from Hell's Kitchen with uh, Mr. Friendly Gordon Ramsay. But now we have another chef on today. Uh, in her own regard, she is highly decorated uh, when it comes to it. Uh, chef Adriana will be here. Uh, Adrian, oh, Adrian, I'm just making people's names up today. Chef Adrian was going to be on here. When she was 22 in 2007, she opened her Napa Valley themed South Miami eatery, Chef Adrian's Vineyard Restaurant and Wine Bar. Fancy. Becoming the youngest resident chef restaurant owner in the United States of America. Well, you go, girl. Uh, now, with three restaurants in the Miami area, we're going to talk to her live from Miami. So that's our that's our that's our first guest. So can't wait for her to come on. And uh, yeah, so welcome to the show, uh, Chef Adrian. Hi. Hello. How are you doing today? Awesome. How are you? I am just hanging in there doing my thing. Uh, you know, just uh, another Tuesday doing the lockdown thing and, and you're in beautiful Miami. So I'm already envious that you're in beautiful Miami with the beaches and the nice weather. So. Yes. The weather, the weather is absolutely gorgeous here. I'm in my home kitchen cause uh, you know, we're in quarantine and right before I head over to my restaurant to cook for tonight's service. But um, here we are. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, let, let's talk. We, we, I was leading in talking about, uh, you know, Governor Abbott in Texas, they're opening restaurants throughout the country, but in Texas primarily, getting to 25% capacity. Uh, I'm sure the state of Florida is close behind. Your guy's governor has been such the rebel with <laughs> kind of doing it his way. Uh, and I'm sure as a restaurant here, you would love for your restaurant open. So yeah. let's talk about restaurants. So when restaurants are one of the hardest hit across the nation, we all know that food service. I remember I was in a restaurant in May, what was it? March 16th was the last time I was in a restaurant. I was with my yeah. two kids and my wife. And we were sitting in a, re I mean, it's crazy that I know the date because we drove, we drive by our favorite place. We were there for lunch, like we always go. Uh, so, you know, you shift to serving delivery and takeout menu, menus and meals from your three restaurants in Miami. So, you know, let me ask you, how quickly did you react to turn, you know, your business into a curbside pickup? Well, very, very quickly quickly. Actually, it was just a few days. Um, we were kind of really just watching the news day by day. And when we realized that this was going to be something that was going to take longer than just a couple of days, we pivoted quickly. And then I think that that is one of the most essential things in uh, your business surviving, um, especially restaurants nowadays. If people just sat there, restaurant owners sat there thinking, what do I do? Or, or they waited too long to do so. That kind of... Um, it negates the fact that you might survive this. Uh, we actually switched very fast, three to four days in. We're like, okay, we have to deliver the same experience that, that we were known for. And we have to figure out how to do this, you know, curbside takeout. Um, and, and it really has gone phenomenally. Awesome. So let me ask you this. Sorry, you caught me mid drink. Uh, <laughs> so all your restaurants are in Miami, which is in Florida for those of you who are aren't geography or geography challenge out there. Uh, so we've all seen the state of Florida has been getting hammered pretty hard in the mainstream media. What measures are you taking to follow the mandate that's there in, uh, you're in Dade County, which is in Miami. So in Dade County, what measures are you taking to protect your staff and of course the, your customers? Okay. Uh, well, whether we'd be in Miami, in California, in New York, wherever we'd be, we'd still take these uh, precautions and these are all our employees are wearing masks, gloves. We have to wash our hands every 20 minutes regardless, switch out the gloves no matter what. Um, when we actually do the curbside, our, we're making sure that even the guests, we don't give food out unless the guests themselves are wearing masks. Um, so we are taking every necessary precaution to make sure that we're safe, that our guests are safe, uh, we want this to actually, we want to be part of the solution, not of the problem. So we're making sure that every night, everything gets sanitized. When we open, everything gets cleaned and sanitized as well. And of course, everything is disposable and sanitary. You have a heck of a social media following. You have over 500,000 Instagram followers. So how did that work with you? Did you go, were, were you one of these awesome social media influencers that put the power of social out there? 
when Corona hit to get word out to the folks that follow you that you're open for business and doing these things? Well, um, I, I can't say that I went to it right away. I mean, this is something that we I've always done. Part of, uh, I think, the success of my career has been that I've always been truly connected with our customers and our guests and our followers. And it's just something that I, I've always done since, uh, since social media was actually cultivated. And I continue to do so. Nothing changed. Corona might have changed the way we operate, but it didn't change my relationship with, with our customers and our followers. Awesome. So let me ask you a question. And a lot of people are talking about this. You know, I've talked to restauranteurs uh, throughout the country. We were talking to Chef Clemenza about this last week uh, in sales, right? Obviously, people sitting down at your restaurant, you know, booze and all the other wonderful things that add up that, uh, you know, help drive sales in a restaurant. You know, what percentage of your sales are you experiencing now compared to before the mandate? Well, I think right now we're operating between a 50 to a 60% of sales, which is excellent compared to, to when we're, we have our doors open for, you know, dine-in customers. Uh, I don't know if it's the same way across the country, but in, in Florida, we're allowed to sell our, our alcohol. So we're allowed to sell our signature sangrias, bottled beers, bottles of wine. So that helps when people are actually looking for the Chef Adrian experience. They are buying a couple or 10 sangrias when they're buying their meals. So I got. I really have to be grateful to everyone for all the support. So let, so let's get into some fun stuff because you know we, we've talked about Corona, but I'm sure people want to know. I know that my 15 year old's actually watching because she is trying to become this culinary expert. Uh, spent a lot of time doing it, so she's a big fan of you know cooking in general. And, and you professional chefs are amazing. So where did you get your pat? When did you get your passion for cooking? When did it start? Well, I actually wanted to be a journalist like you, and um, I was put into a cooking class by mistake. I was a junior, and actually, I was a sophomore in high school. And while I was waiting to get into my journalism class, uh, Johnson Wales University pops in, does a cooking demo, and I call that the lightning strike because after that day, all I wanted to do was cook, cook, and then cook some more. <laughs> I love it. So let me ask you this question, and this actually, you know, my daughter asked this question, so I put it in my notes. Why are there so few female chefs? Because it's a man's world. Um, no, actually, you know, more and more, there are more women, there are more women chefs out there, but it is a very highly demanding career where you're, uh, you know, when, when you are supposed to be at home cooking or taking kids to school or picking up kids from school, you're always working. Uh, when it's family time, you're working. So you have to be, and you know, it's not to say that you can't have a family. You have to have a family. You're going to have to have a modern family that's willing to work with you to, you know, have dinner with you earlier in the day before you go to work. And you have to make sure that you position yourself properly to make sure you don't miss the school dances or the soccer games. It's, but it's good. I, I know that there's a lot of young ladies out there that are looking up to folks like you, Kat Cora, and the other oh, yeah chefs that are out there and, and leading by example same with journalism right we are yeah. very thankful for so many amazing journalists that are out there like samantha guthrie and hoda uh, hoda koba i love hoda i love saying her name just because it's one of those it's like the hardest name in the world to do uh so let me ask you some questions this is this is a good one i love this one for aspiring chefs right everybody out there we all probably have tried to be very experts yeah over the last few weeks you have any basic rules for success in the kitchen? Besides washing your oh. hands, you should automatically do that. Oh, absolutely. I think for sure you have to always, you can use a recipe as a guideline, but you know what's really, really important? To cook with your heart, to cook with passion, to cook with imagination, to not be afraid of looking in your pantry and seeing what's in there and, and really just, you know, cook with inspiration. So... So, so two questions left because I know you're busy. I want to get back to your, your get to get to work. So, you and your restaurants have won a ton of awards, uh, and, and for all of your food excellence, customer service. So, you know, toot your horn a little bit and, and tell us about a few of your restaurants. So, the folks, everybody wants to visit Miami. I know it's on our destination list because it's sunny, and when we finally get to travel, I think there's going to be a lot of people finding the tropical places to go just to be out and get some sunlight. Yeah, uh, well, I have Chef Adrian's that's won Best Restaurant in Miami a couple of years in a row. Best Chef, and, um, you know, my my biggest 
accomplishment, I would say still to this day, is that we get to serve St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital every year for the holiday feast. That's just the most important thing we do, our biggest accomplishment, and um, the most important thing we do, I think. Love that. So before you go, because we got to wrap up here, but so you have written four cookbooks. Awesome. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> And I also hear that you have a seasoning blend that you never cook with. That's probably, if you could just touch on that real fast and then we'll close out here. But what's the story behind this seasoning? If you don't, you well, make it, you don't use it? Oh, I do use it. I use it on everything. It's the other way around. Um, it's called Chef's Dust. I cook almost everything with it. Um, it evokes maximum flavor, which is my thing, which is activating all parts of the palate, sweet, sour, salt, salty, bitter, spicy. Um, it's a blend of three ingredients, and I put it on everything, and it's delicious. It's called Chef's Dust. Oh, well, my goodness. So as we go here and, and move on, uh, how can viewers learn more about you, your amazing cookbooks, this seasoning? I want to hear about how we can get it, and uh, your award-winning restaurant. Um, follow me on Instagram, chef, at Chef Adrian, or just Google Chef Adrian Calvo. I'll pop up. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you, Chef, for coming on today. We appreciate you. We'd love to have you back on really soon to talk about food after this yeah. virus thing. We'd love to hear some good cooking ideas, but I'm going to go check out this seasoning. I'm for sure going to get it. It's good enough to put on everything. Yeah, everything. I need to go get that. So thank you, Chef Adrian, for coming on today. We appreciate you. Have yourself a great week. Thanks. Thanks for having me.